topic, uh, why mm, do we uh, essentially give uh, that importance to the um, evolution of the Italian case law on the point? Because Italy is one of the few case, uh, few cases where national courts have actually give, given an answer to the point of uh, um, the extent of the uh, judge's powers in, uh, um, in dealing with uh, state aid law. And uh, I refer to what uh, uh, Mr. Fiestra has um, said before concerning the uh, different types of extrajudicial control. So the object of extrajudicial controls, uh, points of uh, essentially law and the points of fact. So there is a, a distinction that uh, we'll see, as we will see later on, uh, will be paramount in the uh, analysis of, uh, uh, national, uh, of the national judges. Uh, the, um, the, the Supreme Court has dealt with the problem of uh, ex officio controls in, um, concerning state aid in Italy. Uh, and uh, I, I must uh, stress that uh, uh, ex officio powers in Italy are uh, really an exception to a more than a rule, as I said before. And so the attitude toward the question uh, in, the, in the first place was uh, with uh, an attitude, uh, a very conservative attitude. The, um, the Italian judges have been very reluctant to uh, extend their ex officio powers, uh, uh, of course, also in light of um, not only the general rules uh, concerning, uh, um, concerning the, the management of the, of, the, of the trial, but also in light of uh, uh, questions of Constitutional compatibility, uh, so uh, um, compatibility of exercise power with uh, the general right of defense as set out in the uh, Italian constitution. Um, uh, however, the uh, ever more pressing influence of uh, European Union law has compelled the Supreme Court to uh, question the the rigidity of this uh, conservative approach. And uh, as I mentioned before, the um, most important evolution of the case law has dealt with essentially um, two uh, fields, two, two of the main fields of law. On one hand, tax law, and I specifically refer to the case of banking foundations, uh, but I will not um, dwell on this point so much because this is really, will be the object of uh, our next uh, um, case study. And uh, the point of uh, um, the winding up of an enterprise. So, um, and especially the uh, so-called little problem on the uh, extraordinary administration of uh, what here in Italy call uh, grand imprese in crisis, so large enterprises that uh, enter a period of crisis and they must um, be wound up uh, with, a, or, with a certain uh, procedures that I will not dwell upon because they mm, escape the more specific point uh, of our meeting. Uh, so, um, the first question that uh, has been uh, uh, put to the attention of the Supreme Court uh, concerned the different degrees of judgment in, in the, um, in where a uh, state aid question uh, could be raised. Uh, of course, the, the Supreme Court uh, dealt with uh, um, cases concerning its powers, so the powers of the Supreme Court. Uh, so we must consider that the judgment before the Supreme Court is a judgment with a very limited object, at least, uh, at least in Italy. The Supreme Court of Cassation, Corte di Cassazione, cannot re-examine uh, factual evidence, cannot uh, uh, re-examine uh, the case from a factual point of view, but it is called to uh, rule only on uh, mistakes in the law or other specific uh, uh, errors, or mistakes that have been committed by the judges uh, of the previous degrees. Um, 
the uh, so it was relatively easy for the Supreme Court to state at an earlier time that uh, uh, the Supreme Court, the Court di Cassazione, could not uh, be called to um, uh, express its views to judge a question of state aid if that question was not had not been previously raised in the uh, previous degrees. Of course, one cannot uh, in Italy, but I imagine also in other in other countries. Uh, uh, cannot introduce a certain, a specific point of uh, fact or law for the first time before the Supreme Court. Um, so uh, the first position of the Supreme Court uh, was uh, uh, not not only excluded the, the possibility of ex officio uh, controls by the Supreme Court on the point of uh, state aid but also excluded that the parties could, for the first time, um, introduce the question before the, Supreme, the, before the Supreme Court. Then, and I refer to my tenth uh, slide, what I call the Supreme Court step one, um, the next step was to um, focus entirely on the point of ex officio powers of judges. They, the Supreme Court allowed four parties uh, to bring before the, court of, uh, the Supreme Court uh, the question of compatibility of a certain national provision, a certain national measure uh, with EU uh, law and with specifically uh, with specific regards to state aid law. So the parties were allowed to bring before the Supreme Court the question for the first time during the entire trial, uh, but. Uh, uh, on the other hand, the Supreme Court excluded that it, it um, was amongst its, its powers to act uh, ex officio. Uh, so uh, I, um, I included in the slides some uh, examples of uh, uh, Supreme Court judgment where the uh, question was uh, specifically dealt with. The first uh, judgment that I put in the slide uh, concerned the uh, legislation on uh, uh, large enterprises uh, entering uh, crisis. Uh, it said that the objection with which a party states that a state provision is in breach of EU law concerning state aid law is an objection in the substantial sense, since it aims at demonstrating the lack of the conditions for the demand to be granted. Therefore, it is included that the judge must a certain ex officio the existence of such elements in order to verify whether the provision must be disregarded. So here the, the Supreme Court, uh, um, the exodus of the Supreme Court was very conservative. It, uh, in, my, in my opinion, it also uh, disregarded the distinction that we have made before between different types of ex officio controls. So, uh, one point is uh, for the Supreme Court to pronounce on the interpretation of the law. On one, another point is to uh, examine ex officio factual elements, elements that uh, constitute only facts. Uh, this judgment uh, sort of uh, uh, takes for granted that uh, an ascertainment, uh, an, an examination of this sort concerning state aid is a factual uh, examination. So um, it uh, disregards the fact that uh, uh, there is also, of course, an interpretation of the specific law that must uh, be conducted. This is a point that will be uh, then corrected by uh, further judgment of the court. Uh, and I, in the same slide, in the next slide, I put another uh, example of uh, what I call the step one of the evolution of the case law on the, um, on the point. Uh, so, uh, so, always concerning the, uh, the point of the large enterprises entering, um, entering crisis. Uh, it, here, the court, again, takes for granted that a certain kind of analysis on the point of compatibility of a national measure with European Union law implies, uh, always implies, 
uh, an ascertaining in concrete terms of a different treatment uh, putting uh, being put uh, being put in place. So, in my opinion, this is um, a point of view that uh, um, is, uh, of course, very conservative, and again, start um, starts from uh, an assumption that is not actually right. So there are cases where. Uh, there is not the necessity of, uh, uh, there are no necessities of uh, uh, a factual, a certain a factual examination uh, to understand whether or not a certain parameter constitutes uh, um, state aid. Then, this is something that has been then dealt with in the second step of the evolution of uh, um, the Supreme Court as <coughs> law. What is interesting, in my in my opinion, is that is also that as you can see from the dates of the judgment that I put in the slide, the um, there are in the same year and also concerning the same question, um, very different positions are taken by the judges in with a few months of difference of them, which gives the exact measures of uh, how much the question has been um, at the attention of uh, the Italian, uh, Italian judges and also the Italian scholars uh, uh, for, uh, for my debate uh, was very, very heightened. Um, so, step two of the Supreme Court, uh, uh, the first uh, the first um, steps have been uh, more more careful. There will have been more open attitude towards the question, but uh, it was explained not much as uh, an, uh, the duty of the national judge to directly apply the national uh, the European Union law but uh, as an interpretation of the procedural rules. So, so this case uh, the, that you can find in my 12th slide, uh, the 2004 case, uh, it, it concerned uh, an interpretation of the rule uh, concerning uh, the appeal. So what must uh, be uh, um, the object of an appeal? And this for the, for here for the first time, uh, concerning state aid uh, was uh, ascertain that uh, the analysis of the compatibility of domestic law with community law is not conditioned upon the introduction of a specific question or demand since the point can be known by the judge also ex officio. Then, um, and I come to my 13th slide, uh, Again, the debate was so heightened, the, 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 there was a, such a high degree of attention on the point that uh, the Supreme Court itself understood that there was the need to invest uh, an even higher uh, authority on the point. Uh, so it referred the question to the so-called Sezioni Unite, joint sections of uh, the, the Supreme Court. Uh, briefly said, uh, um, the most uh, uh, relevant questions are put before the joint sections of the Supreme Court, and uh, all on if there is a debate within the, the, the same Supreme Court itself. The single sections of the Supreme Court can refer the question to the joint sections. So the joint sections were refer the question of ex officio controls uh, of ex officio controls in um, Italy, in the field of state aid and uh, uh, in 2006 they clarified that the exam of the implementation of state aid measures must be conducted also ex officio by national judges even if a specific objection or request on the point has not been raised by the parties and uh, this uh, uh, judgment uh, has been uh, um, kind of groundbreaking for uh, Italian uh, for Italian case law. And uh, there was uh, uh, this point has been made by the Supreme Court, by the joint sections of the Supreme Court, uh, by 
applying um, a sort of analogic interpretation, which refer to with a reference to uh, other similar cases, uh, such as the case of use supervenience, so the uh, case of a uh, modification in the law uh, during the trial, or questions of constitutional compatibility. Uh, that uh, after which uh, a certain uh, rule, a certain provision has been has well, uh, because deemed uh, incompatible with the with the constitution. So this has been the uh, main point, the starting point of uh, an evolution that has uh, in 2007 for the first time uh, led to the recognition of. Different types of ex officio controls. So, here in Italy now, uh, case law has been quite uh, constant uh, in the latest year to um, divide the question of the types of ex officio controls uh, in two uh, categories. Uh, so, type one, uh, ex uh, certain ex officio uh, analysis of judges uh, on point of law and ex officio controls of judges on points of facts. Uh, I mentioned in the slide that the 2007 uh, uh, ruling of, uh, of the Supreme Court, uh, we, according to which the issue of the compatibility of a national provision with new law can be raised ex officio by the judges uh, on the ground of the or, um, principle that I mentioned before, EU or Novit Curia, as it happens in the case of youth supervenience. Uh, however, there is a distinction. So the pronoun, the judgment of uh, the joint sections of the Supreme Court was the first step towards the formulation of uh, a distinction, depending on the issue requiring uh, factual scrutiny. So whether or not the issue before the Supreme Court or before the National requires uh, a further examination of factual elements. So, if the unlawfulness of the entire discipline uh, or one or more of its rules in questions, um, and when, of course, uh, uh, it is then uh, clear that the entire regime, the entire provisions at issue uh, constitute uh, by, by themselves, so uh, without the need of a further factual analysis, uh, a state aid, then the, uh, the court can uh, intervene ex officio and pronounce on its uh, uh, compatibility, not, not so much as compatibility, but on the need of uh, uh, a further examination on uh, the point of state aid. On the contrary, if the unlawfulness of the discipline comes into question in relation to its specific impl implementation, and so whether or not the uh, subject in question enjoys a uh, higher benefit than those granted to other of its competitors because of a state aid, the, ju the judge cannot examine the question if the parties do not specify and demonstrate the relevant facts. Uh, the question, the, the, judge, the judgment uh, that I quoted, it does not specify this point, but of course, this means that there are obstacles to the possibility for a party to present those uh, relevant, uh, relevant facts, which means that if a judge does not have all of its elements uh, right in front of him and uh, according to the procedural rules of the Italian Civil Procedural Code, there is no more time to uh, present those uh, facts, then ex officio control is, uh, uh, is impeded, is, uh, is out of the question, cannot be, uh, cannot be upheld. Um, this, of course, uh, uh, raises the other question of uh, res judicata that I will not dwell upon because it was already mentioned by Mr. Fistra. Um, suffice it to say that this is now the, uh, the case law on the point, and the, the, there, have, this, there have been, as you can see in my uh, 
my last, me, my last slide, slide number uh, 16, that uh, uh, you can see that the, then the uh, position held by the Supreme Court in 2007 was then upheld even more recently in 2015 and 2016. Uh, there are not many cases, many uh, more recent cases on the point of state aid. Uh, uh, so the, la the latest, last case that um, concerned the point of uh, extra future control was dealt with in 2016, and uh, it confirmed that the uh, the distinction between uh, extra future controls concerning sexual elements and uh, extra future controls concerning uh, provisions that constitute ex se uh, by themselves uh, state aid without the need of uh, uh, a more specific uh, uh, element, uh, examination on the factual element of the case by the court. Um, so the case study that I thought would be interesting to examine today concerned banking foundations. Uh, for those of you, of course, who are not uh, from Italy, I will briefly uh, introduce the, the issue. Banking foundations uh, were introduced with an Italian uh, law, with an Italian reform law of 1990 that uh, separated the, uh, the bank as an enterprise and the bank uh, as, uh, and the ownership of the bank. So uh, the the bank as an enterprise uh, uh, was uh, um, given, so to speak, to uh, corporations and uh, its ownership and the, the shares of that corporation were given to uh, an entity, a new entity um, called Banking Foundation. Uh, so, the, the, of course, the corporation, the banking corporation, uh, continued to uh, exact, to um, act as a bank, so uh, with uh, uh, as an enterprise, and uh, the uh, foundation uh, had certain limits for, for uh, that have, that have been posed to to its uh, activity. Those limits uh, um, will be very relevant in the uh, examination of the solution to the case. Uh, so the um, the law expressly expressly provided that the foundation could only have uh, acted to attain purposes of uh, public and social interest, principally in the field of scientific research. Uh, of course, this activity uh, was uh, not was not excluded by the fact that the foundation uh, had to manage its uh, its shares. Uh, so the shares in the uh, banking enterprise, so in the corporation. Um, and uh, initially, the foundations could also acquire shares of other businesses, either in the banking sector or in other banking sectors, in other fields that were not uh, uh, banking. So with the only difference that uh, they could not uh, acquire a majority sh majority shares in other banking uh, uh, corporations. They were under the control of the Ministry of Finance, and then I move on to slide number three of my, the second group of slides. Uh, the way they were under control of the Ministry of Finance and they needed uh, the authorization of the ministry for operating uh, in, uh, on their shares of the banking corporation and other uh, banking uh, institutions. This limit was then repealed later on, but that uh, will not be uh, relevant for the solution of the case. Then in uh, 1998, uh, the, uh, an Italian law modified the limit to the foundation's activity. They uh, could acquire shares in enterprises only in as much as the, the, the such enterprises were instrumental to their purposes, so in their in relevant uh, sectors that uh, were connected to their social 
uh, uh, so the context here is uh, that of an entity which uh, does not have uh, direct uh, entrepreneurial activity and uh, holds shares in another corporation that acts as an enterprise and um, foundation, this foundation uh, does not operate in uh, in businesses but only manages shares uh, so in moving on to my next slide in 2001 the uh, uh, specific uh, uh, tax provision uh, clarified that banking foundations are non-profit making entities operating according to principles of transparency and morality. Uh, for tax purposes, uh, banking foundations are considered to be non-commercial entities with, even though they pursue their objective through instrumental enterprises, which is what we have said before uh, concerning the tax can now operate only in fields that uh, are connected to their social purposes. Uh, and uh, mm, this is the framework as far as banking foundations are, are concerned. The legislative context with regard to uh, tax is that that you can find in slide number five, which uh, generally uh, I, this is not the uh, current regime. Of course, I referred to the previous uh, regime uh, concerning uh, corporation and uh, uh, critical persons, uh, which has now been repealed and substituted. But of course, this is not relevant for the purposes of the case study. Um, at, the, at, the, at the time, dividends distributed by limited liability companies. Uh, are, were subject to withholding taxes and advance payments, and uh, dividends distributed to entities that are not subject to corporation tax were subject to a uh, 30% withholding tax. Uh, the treatment for foundations partially deferred at the time, uh, so corporation tax was reduced by half for entities of social assistance, foundations, and other non-profit institutes. And there was an exemption from withholding tax as an advance payment uh, on dividends. So uh, generally, the uh, tax, uh, the treatment uh, uh, of uh, those entities were, uh, was partially different from the treatment of other entities. So, uh, moving on to the facts of the case, slide number seven. The banking foundations uh, ask, ask the authority for the exemption from withholding tax on dividends, uh, stemming from their shares in the banking enterprise, or in the corporation that I mentioned before, um, and the application of taxes reduced by half. So, uh, tax authority rejected such requests, stating that uh, the, share, the managing of the shares constituted a commercial uh, activity, escaping the advantage regime. regime. Uh, and uh, uh, this request was then denied also in the first degree of judgment. There was a second, a second degree of judgment uh, where the Court of Appeal so to speak, uh, requested uh, the uh, granted the request in light of the foundation's purposes of public interest, in light of which uh, the Court of Appeal stated that the uh, the banking foundation did not operate market such as other competitors. So the Ministry of Finance went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court was then called upon to uh, render its judgment on the point. It is important to stress, of course, that no mention whatsoever of any question concerning the compatibility of the tax measures with EU law, and in particular with state law, 
was uh, made throughout the entire judgment. So the, the, uh, the, not, nothing in the trial ever mentioned the question of uh, state aid. So now we must understand how the Supreme Court ruled, ruled on the point. Uh, of course, there are two different aspects of the, of the question. A more procedural aspect of the of the case, which uh, uh, concerns the specific object of our today meeting. Uh, so, uh, whether or not the Supreme Court uh, can, uh, by law, examine the question under state aid law ex officio, and uh, then the more substantial question of whether or not the measure at issue, if applied to uh, banking foundations, could constitute a, a state aid uh, with all that comes with it in terms of procedural or procedural rules. So we should try to apply here, in this case, the principles that I have mentioned before on the distinction between the two types of ex officio controls. Uh, so whether or not an ex officio control is possible by the Supreme Court, and if it is possible, uh, it is possible because of factual elements on or on the point of, uh, of law. General terms, uh, Italian law allows the Supreme Court to examine ex officio the question of uh, uh, compatibility with state aid law. Staying on the point of procedural of procedural law and going back to the distinction that we made before concerning the two different types of ex officio control. In this in this case, of course the case was more complicated than 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 that, than how I described, but I willingly simplified the fact of the case in order for you to uh, see the the point that I tried to make before concerning the two the difference between the two types of uh, ex officio controls. So between uh, the two types of ex officio control. Uh, as been made by the, the Supreme Court in the 2007 judgment that we talked about before in Italy, uh, on the point that uh, um, certain provisions constitute uh, state aid ex se. So there is no need to uh, examine the fact from a factual perspective. Because that, uh, um, because that uh, uh, provision constitutes state aid in also in, let me say, theoretical terms. So it is enough to just uh, read and understand the provision to, to see that it, there is a different difference in treatment and that this difference uh, influences in a certain way the functioning of, uh, of the market. This is the, the turning point for the Supreme Court. So in the point that Supreme Court uses to distinguish between the, uh, the first type of an official duty to control and the second type of an official duty to control. The distinction between type one and type two of uh, official control is uh, uh, a very movable distinction depending on the degree of judicial activism uh, of the judge. In fact, uh, that is precisely correct because the, the Supreme Court, based only on the fact that I mentioned earlier, decided that it had to refer the question to the Court of Justice. So it uh, uh, I refer the question to the Court of Justice and uh, uh, found there to be uh, in abstract a problem of, uh, of state aid, uh, a problem of uh, 
uh, uh, measure uh, constituting state aid with the two different sets of problems of uh, procedural nature and a sub substantial nature. It was this was not a state aid, a state aid that had been notified uh, to the Commission, and then the uh, the Supreme Court referred the, the the case to the Court of Justice of uh, of the European Union, uh, which. Uh, uh, rendered its, um, its judgment and, uh, um, con and concentrated on the point of uh, the uh, existence of a state aid in that uh, specific uh, uh, case. So the, um, the facts that I mentioned to you uh, were actually <clears throat> the only facts that the Supreme Court, the Italian Supreme Court, deemed relevant to render its judgment to so, and to act ex officio in the uh, in the case uh, uh, in the case at issue so uh, this goes to demonstrating in my opinion uh, how the distinction between type 1 and type 2 <coughs> of ex officio controls uh, can be actually kind of movable and not so determined and not so defined on the ground of those questions, the Supreme Court, the Italian Supreme Court, actually uh, in 2004 referred the question uh, to the Court of Justice of the European Union, which rendered its judgment in 2006. How, in your opinion, the Court of Justice uh, uh, would uh, examine the question? So, of course, we cannot dwell on the more specific elements of uh, the actual uh, relevance of the case for the internal market. So we do not examine the, the question on the, from the perspective of uh, the, the minimis exception or uh, the actual uh, fact that such measure would uh, have on the... Uh, on the <laughs> uh, on the, on, the, on the internal market. So in abstract, uh, would this measure, uh, according to you, constitute uh, uh, state aid? So of course we have to examine if the banking foundation in itself can be considered as uh, uh, an enterprise uh, operating on the market and uh, uh, we come to the analysis of what constitutes its uh, uh, object. Again, the purposes of social uh, public interest and management of uh, its uh, holdings in the uh, banking corporation and possibility of acquisition uh, of shares in other uh, enterprises, banking or no banking. Uh, so the Court of Justice uh, has to uh, pronounce on the on this question. How does it uh, how does it rule? How does the court rule? Is of course the, the first question is then is the banking foundation an enterprise? Uh, so a subject that comes relevant uh, from a point of view of uh, EU law on state aid. So, is it the management of uh, holdings and shares a sufficient uh, activity to acquire the nature of an enterprise for purposes of uh, European Union law and state aid law? Basically, the Court of Justice stated that uh, in an abstract term, the, uh, the management of uh, uh, shares uh, does not preclude the possibility for uh, an enterprise, uh, for an entity to be considered as actually conducting enterprise. And it uh, referred to definition, the definitions uh, uh, that are considered relevant in the field of VAT, specifically with regard to this case. And so uh, it uh, stated that uh, in theory, the, uh, the 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 measure could fiscal measure uh, granting advantages uh, so relevant such as the reduction by half 
of the tax debt and the exemption uh, from withholding tax uh, can be in, its, uh, in itself considered as a state aid, being it that the uh, banking foundation can be considered as uh, an enterprise operating uh, in the market. And, with, and uh, of course, then uh, there come all the uh, necessary specification concerning the influence uh, on the uh, internal market. And the Court of Justice stated that, in theory, the, uh, given the relevance of uh, the uh, of the uh, banking sector. In, uh, in Italy and uh, uh, throughout the entire internal market, uh, the measure could actually constitute uh, state, a state aid. So this <coughs> basically concludes the, the case study, and I think it concludes the morning session, uh, if there are no questions from you.